Hi there! Emily Midget here with you today for my latest installment of Exploring with Emily. This month I'm working with Distress Oxide Reinkers. Watercoloring with regular Distress inks has long been a staple for many watercolorists in the paper crafting industry, as the Distress line reacts beautifully with water and behaves similarly to regular watercolors, and the Oxide line has similar water reactive properties. For today's video, I'm working with several of the Distress Oxide Reinkers, but you can also use the Distress Oxide ink pads by tapping them on your mat, as I also show in the video. I pair the watercolors with the new Backyard Friends from the March Essentials by Ellen release. After shaking each bottle very well to ensure that the ink was properly mixed, I dropped just a few drops of each Oxide Reinker into a different well. The opaque element of the ink can cause some separation, so shaking each reinker is an important step. The ink separated a bit after sitting on my mat, but they were quickly remixed with a swirl of my paintbrush. I created a color swatch chart by stamping the Waffle Flower Color Swatches stamp set onto some watercolor paper, then created a nice ombre with each of the oxide inks and my damp paintbrush. Depending on the amount of water added to the undiluted color, the oxide inks can create a beautifully soft and subtle gradation of color. The Distress Oxide inks are mostly known for their superior blending capabilities and their velvety texture, but they are also able to create a beautiful, subtle watercolored effect. Their opacity also allows for fantastically vibrant color with a different texture and feel than traditional translucent watercolors. I began by stamping and clear embossing several of the images from the new Backyard Friends stamp set onto the smooth side of some of the Distress watercolor paper to really capture all of the details of these stamps. For the larger bird, I began with a very diluted combination of Spiced Marmalade and Stormy Sky, adding a line of watercolor to where my shadows and colors would be most concentrated, then cleaning my brush and pulling the color out into a smooth fade. Because the inks react so beautifully with water, you can easily go back a second and third time to add or remove color. I was also surprised at how well the Distress watercolor paper held up to repeatedly layering color and water. I did not notice any pilling or serious warping. The color continues to move and blend quite nicely, even after a bit of drying time. As you can see with the second smaller bird on my panel, I was able to create an extremely subtle and lightly watercolored look with very diluted color, this time using Stormy Sky and Pumice Stone. I diluted the color in the well with clean water, then laid that diluted color down on the paper, cleaned my brush, and pulled that pale color out even further, creating a smooth, subtle blend on my gray and white bird, and allowing the crisp white of the watercolor paper to still shine through on the bird's belly. For the rest of the images, I used mostly concentrated color, as the images were a bit small to concern myself with adding much shading and detail. I did end up having to use a brushed corduroy ink pad for the branches and nest, as I don't own any of the brown reinkers. I simply tapped the ink pad onto my waffle flower mat and picked up the color with my paintbrush in the same way that I did with the reinker droplets. During today's video, I used the new Waffle Flower Mixed Media Mat to help keep my Distress Oxide watercolors contained. The mat is made of food-grade silicone, which makes it heat-resistant and a dream to clean. I used this mat recently with some PH Martin's liquid watercolors that I thought had stained it horribly, but a little water and a spritz of some Hero Art stamp cleaner made it look as good as new. The mat is super useful when paired with liquid watercolors, especially if you're like me and you don't like your watercolors to blend until you're ready for them to blend. The little wells prevent the colors from mixing, and as you can see, there's plenty of space in each well. They are sized to fit a mini ink cube, making it even easier to use your other water-based dye inks. Thank you. 
For the background, I wanted to create a pretty sunset sky, so I did a little wet-on-wet -wet watercoloring with spiced marmalade, worn lipstick, and seedless preserves with a few dabs of stormy sky to indicate clouds. I began by taping my A2 panel of Distress watercolor paper down on my cutting board, then added a good amount of clean water to the panel and dropping dabs of color with my paintbrush, cleaning the brush and swirling the colors around to remove the harsh lines from the exceptionally textured Distress watercolor paper. You can also almost vacuum up some of the color by drying your brush and then applying that dry brush to your very wet paper. The dry brush acts as a vacuum to lift up some of that liquid from the surface of your paper. I wanted to add some water droplets and ink splatters, so I zapped the wet paper with my heat gun until it was very dry. I did this to prevent splatters from spreading on the wet cardstock and causing blooms. To take advantage of the Distress Inks water reactive properties, I spritzed some water in my hand, then dropped it on top of my dried panel and dabbed it with a Kleenex to pull some of the color away, leaving little white spots all over my background panel. To create splatters, I picked up some of the Seedless Preserves ink on my paintbrush and tapped it over the top of my panel at various angles, giving that artistically splattered look. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this introductory peek into what fun it can be to watercolor with Distress Oxide images. I have a few more ideas up my sleeve to show you different ways that you can get more mileage out of your Distress Oxide inks as a coloring medium. So keep on the lookout for next month's Exploring with Emily video. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like more information on the products used, head over to the Ellen Hudson blog for all of the details. Thanks so much for watching, and have a marvelous day.